Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing some winter sowing in February. We are in Zone 5B in New Hampshire and uh, typically this is not the time that people do winter sowing. Most people do winter sowing in January and if you live in a warm area like uh, Zone 7 and under and over, you probably would want to start winter sowing a lot earlier than now. But for us over here where we live in a cold environment, Zone 6, 5 and and uh, the zones below that, uh, you can do winter sowing during this stretch of time. And this is perfect for things that require stratification or plants that love the cold. Stratification is simply exposing the seed to a cold period before uh, it can germinate. Some plants require that period of stratification. And uh, since I am going to be starting some perennial flowers, I thought that this would be a perfect way to start these flowers uh, by uh, having them winter sowing them outside. So this way I am saving on space inside in my grow room uh, because I have a lot of plants to plant and also these plants can be exposed to the cold temperatures that they would need uh, without me having them to put them in the fridge and uh, uh, go through that uh, long process. Instead I could just put them here basically set them and forget them because we do get a lot of uh, snow and rain during this period of time. So today is unusually warm for us. It is 55 degrees and uh, it's going to be warm throughout this whole week and then it's going to start getting cold again. Uh, so I thought it would be perfect to film this video for you guys. With winter sowing, all you need is just a clear jug like this over here. And uh, you could use a water jug, a milk jug. I'm using orange juice jugs because that's what we have. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to first make some holes at the bottoms uh, because you need some drainage for uh, the water to escape from this container. Otherwise, you're going, your seeds are going to be waterlogged. They are going to rot. And uh, let's say they do germinate uh, and you do get some rain. Uh, or a lot, a little bit of rain or a lot of rain, all this is going to be waterlogged and uh, whatever plant you had in there is going to rot. So the very important thing that you need to do is to poke a hole in here. And I know I said that, poke a few holes in the bottom. And I know I said that I'm not going to be doing winter sowing this year, but uh, here I am doing winter sowing because I thought that I could save on some space inside. I think instead of this scissor, I'm gonna need a knife some holes in here or you could also use a drill but I could just take the scissor and make a cut in here and I'm cutting about halfway through this uh, container and you want to leave part of it attached at the back whichever side you prefer so I'm cutting through it and I'm going to leave this side attached over here Still need to cut a little more on this side. There we go. So it kind of opens up like this. going to go grab a knife so that I can poke some holes in here. When you think you got everything, you quickly realize that you forgot something. Ideally, you want to do that before you cut it. So I like to poke four holes in there just to make sure there's uh, good drainage. And then once you have that ready, you can fill the bottom part with some dirt. So I have with me some just regular organic potting soil. You don't need a seed starting mix for this uh, because uh, the plants are going to be growing as if they're growing outside. Uh, so I noticed that uh, starting the plants with a potting mix 
in the winter sewing method is better than starting them with a seed starting mix. Because the plants are going to be uh, growing outside and uh, when you get to them, by the time you want to take them out and uh, plant them in the ground, they would have already grown a lot. So starting them in a potting mix is going to be better because a potting mix is going to have a lot more nutrients than a regular seed starting mix, uh, especially that they are going to uh, go not just through the seedling stage, but also through the uh, kind of uh, medium stage of growing uh, right before you plant them. In the not my first time starting seeds in February. I started it last year, I think, in February or the year before. I don't remember. <laughs> Some year ago, I started them in February and I had, a, uh, I had great success and I'm doing it again this year. If you don't have any indoor grow lights or, uh, or a uh, sunny window, a south-facing fa sunny window, or you don't have a lot of space inside in your house, to grow plants this is a great way to grow plants and you can even start warm weather plants this way you just want to start them a little bit later so that they don't get snapped by the cold weather in case if you get temperatures like this for example like right now we have 55 degree temperatures and tomorrow and then it's going to go down again into freezing temperatures uh, we might get snow again so in case if something like that happen and your plants are going to start to grow in a warm weather environment and then when the cold weather comes they are going to be snapped by that cold and all the seedlings are going to die or uh, if not all of them at least a lot of them so i got one done and i'm going to do that for quite a few of them because i'm, I'm going to need a few of these but before I do that let me just show you what I'm going to be planting today this is my perennial flower and shrub seed uh, container over here and I've done a seed organization vid organization video and uh, you can check that out I'll leave a link for it in the description box below um, after you watch this video <laughs> so let me show you the plants that I'm going to be starting today I'm going to be starting some milkweed some green twister echinacea, love parade yarrow, some astilbe, hookera. I have several types of hookera, and I'm going to be starting, I think, a couple of them. We'll see. We'll decide on that. And columbine. I have beautiful varieties of columbine over here, so I'm gonna choose three of them, and we are going to be starting these today. So. Uh, for each of the varieties, I'm going to have their own containers if I'm able to. I don't know how many containers I have, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Alright, so I'll do the hookahs in one container and the columbines in separate containers because it's important for me to have a whole a lot of these. The hookahs, I can have them in one container and just have one variety this year. And then next year, I'll plant some more varieties. Or I can plant two varieties and I'll separate them into two different spaces. So I'm gonna put the seeds back in here so that I can fill these containers with the soil and uh, then I'll continue on the next step because I don't want my seeds getting dirty or wet. So I'm going to start with these three containers over here just to make sure that I can get something on film just in case if the battery dies and I don't have an extra battery. I do have one but it's charging right now. So I just want to make sure everything <laughs> is covered. One very important thing to mention is that if you are, live in a dry environment, make sure to give these some supplemental water during the, grow, do, during the winter season uh, so that they don't dry out completely because uh, if the seeds dry out and they are about ready to germinate, 
then they will die. So if you want to make sure that your seeds are going to germinate, you want to make sure that the soil inside this stays moist. And another thing that I did, forgot to mention is that this cap over here, you're going to get rid of it, you're going to keep it open. And because if you leave this cap on, you're going to cre create uh, a, uh, you're going to trap in all the heat and all the humidity inside here, and you're going to cause uh, the, your your plants to get cooked, and also you're going to cause uh, possibly mold to grow in there. And uh, if they are dry inside, um, especially because there are drainage holes in there, there's there's no way for the water to get to them. So. You want to leave that cap open so that water can get through and so that the exchange of air can get through. And this is a great way also to kind of uh, get your plants ready for the outdoor weather because uh, they're already being exposed to the winds and to the cold weather. It is a, a semi-greenhouse sort in, a, in effect, but it's not uh, extremely insulative. Uh, so the plants are going to be uh, somewhat, out, you know, somewhat used to the outdoor uh, elements and uh, uh, the wind is also going to strengthen their stems whatever wind goes through this uh, uh, tunnel over here and uh, whirls inside this container and it's going to cause these stems to strengthen and you also want to make sure to put these in a uh, sunny location so that they can receive all the sunlight that they need especially that during the winter season we have less sunlight than uh, during the summer season so these uh, plants are going to require the maximum amount of sunlight that you can give them so don't put them in a shady location and don't put them under uh, anything that's going to drip down a whole lot of water or um, anything that's going to just uh, obscure the plants uh, growth and from sunlight or just uh, damage it with uh, tons of outpouring water on it uh, or something like that. I think I mentioned everything. So right now I'm going to start planting the yarrow and you want to follow the package direction. And this is a perennial in our zone. I believe it's a perennial from zones five to eight. Okay. And they grow from 1.5 to two feet tall and they are frost hardy. So this is perfect for winter sowing because especially because they are a perennial. And these also love to be in full sun. Surface sow. So this package requires to be surface sown. So I'm just going to put the seeds on the surface of the soil. And I'm just gently going to press them down. And I think I want to plant about... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five about nine or ten plants in here, ten seeds in this container. And it sounds like the seeds are super small also. So I'm going to have three seeds on each side and I'm gonna make an indentation on where I want to plant them. And hopefully a lot of them will germinate. I probably should put two seeds in each location just in case if one of them decides not to germinate. I thought that these seeds are going to be more difficult to handle but they're not and they're pretty easy to see also. I'm not going to water these because over here we get tons of rain and we are going to get rain this week tomorrow actually we're going to get rain so this yarrow over here is done the soil is a little bit on the dry side but I think it's going to be okay with the moisture that it's going to receive from the rain and also because it's going to be sitting on the ground it's going to absorb some of the moisture from the ground as well so now after we have uh, put put the seed in here. I'm just gonna gently press them over the surface of the soil. You don't want to bury them because these need to be surface sown. They require sunlight to germinate. Okay. I'm going to take some tape and this packing tape works fine for me. I haven't had any problem with it. So I just want to go a few times around and you want to close this up so that no air and uh, 
so that no air can go through and this container can be insulated as best as you can, of course. It's not going to be perfect. I like to go around a few times. Now we are going to label this and I have my garden marker over here with me and I'm going to write on it the name of the plant that I just planted, that I put away, which is Love Parade Yarrow. I like to write the name on all sides just in case if the water washes it out. Um, there would be some space that gotten did not get washed out but these garden markers are great because they are UV resistant and water resistant and uh, they would last uh, for seasons uh, being exposed to rain and water and uh, the mark the marker just doesn't the whatever you write on there it's not going to fade out And I like to write on the top and on the bottom as well because eventually this is going to be taken out uh, when you want to uh, kind of uh, have the plant harden up a little bit more after the season, uh, the cold season is done. You open this up uh, and you can leave it in here for a little bit longer before you plant it in the ground. Alright, so one done. A whole bunch to go. Now I'm going to plant the green twister echinacea and echinaceas I believe are hardy to zone uh, 4 but this packet doesn't say to what zone they are hardy and it also says to sow at eighth of an inch depth. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the other one just do a little a little indentation in the soil and then we can cover it with some more soil. And the seeds on this one are pretty big, so they're very easy to see. I'm also going to plant two seeds in each hole, just to make sure I get a good germination rate. If I get more plants, that's great. <laughs> if not, that's okay also. At least I would have ensured that I got the amount of plants that I need. Okay, so now I'm going to cover them with a little bit of soil. Same thing, we are going to tape this container. And write on it its name. stay tuned to see where these plants are going to go eventually. <laughs> so if you're new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos and uh, figure out where I'm going to be planting these plants. <laughs> Alright, so right now I'm going to be planting milkweed, the gay butterflies and milkweed. And uh, this is a mix, so I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to be getting. Uh, so it's going to be a nice surprise. And so this uh, is a perennial from zones 3 to 9 and it needs to be sown at a quarter to a half an inch depth. So I'm just going to sew it at a quarter of an inch depth and I'm going to create the holes. Just break up any lumps in the soil so that it's easy to sow the, the seeds. So I'm making these holes just a little bit deeper than the other ones. 
and then we are going to cover them with some soil after we put the seeds in. I like that. It seems very symmetrical. <laughs> Ooh, healthy. These are some big seeds. And I have great luck separating plants from each other when they are in the seedling stage. I've never had any problem with that. The plants do struggle a little bit at the beginning, but then they just bounce back up and they do great. Alright, number three. Alright, we're making progress. <laughs> I'm so happy it is a warm day and I can do this outside because I was so worried that I'm gonna have to do this inside and just make a big mess. This is wonderful. Did I poke holes in here? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm starting to get nervous. Okay. You can see it doesn't have to be perfect. There are so many imperfections in all of these. And of course, don't forget to take that cap off. Three down. Oh, forgot to label this. I think what I want to work on next is the columbine. So I have a few varieties of columbine. I have I don't know if you guys can see it's so sunny and I can't see I have a few varieties of columbine that I want to plant this is salmon rose columbine and I also have let me see if I can show you a picture of it look at this beauty over here uh, here let's take a take the packets out Nora Barlow there we go and the Nora Barlow pink and William Guinness. So these are the three varieties that I'm going to be planting today. I would love to plant all the varieties that I have right now with me, but I have to be realistic and know that I can't get these plants in the ground in time before they start uh, suffering and from being in pots. And uh, I have a lot of projects going on also this year. I did a lot last year and this year I have a lot more. So uh, I just have to be realistic and know that these plants that are in here have to wait their turn to be planted so this year I'm gonna be planting these three varieties I might start these in the fall and have them come up the next season maybe uh, we'll see how that goes depending on uh, how the season is if it's not super crazy so I want to have one container for each of these columbine varieties this way I can have tons of them in one location uh, and not just have a few of that same variety in one location because it kind of will look sparse. I like a big drift of columbine. Uh, I think they would make a great statement and I think they are great for hummingbirds and for the bees and they're just so beautiful. These two different varieties, the salmon rose, the, the clementine salmon rose and naro barlow pink are just so different than your usual columbine and I am uh, very happy to be starting them <laughs> right now because they're just an unusual unusual columbine you don't see these uh, grown typically so let's go ahead and grab the containers to start these I'm not very particular about my potting mix because I don't have a great selection in our area and uh, I just grabbed this bag from Home Depot because they don't have soil out uh, they don't have uh, soil in their outdoor section right now all the soil is indoor and this mix looks a little bit dry it's all right we'll absorb the moisture from the snow underneath it as it breaks it in, as it melts. Then we're going to drop stuff on the ground. So. My 
battery is about to die, I'm just going to quickly plant these columbines and I'll show you the rest of the varieties that I'm going to be planting. Uh, but if I am not able to finish this video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if you also have any tips or tricks on winter sowing or any other method that uh, will allow people to plant uh, plants outside without any grow lights or anything of the sort so that they can get a jump start on the season. Uh, if you have any tips like that, please leave them in the comment section down below. I have some other ideas and I will be sharing these with you in the future as I get to them and uh, as I have the time to. Right now, I wanted to share winter sewing with you and uh, this was not on my plan, but here we are, <laughs> we're doing it. So I'm going to start with this variety first, the Clementine Salmon Rose and it says to just cover to just press it onto the soil to not cover it and this plant likes full sun to partial shade i have a lot of places like that right now that i will be i will have access to as i clean up my wooded area over here i'm so excited i love these columbines they're, they look so charming not a lot of seeds in here. No, no, no. <gasps> no. Okay, well, I guess it's a special variety, so I'm going to have faith in the planting. And I'm going to just put one seed in each place. So I'm going to make an indentation and I'm going to put one seed in each indentation. I thought I ordered a lot more than that. Uh, well, I could be wrong. Maybe not. wait for the wind to kind of calm down a little bit because these are very precious seeds and I don't want them to get blown away. And I'm going to grab some snow and put it on top. I'll probably reg regret that. I'm going to grab it with my hands. My hands are going to freeze if I do that, but it's all right. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to help the soil to absorb some moisture because it is a warm day. The snow is going to melt as it sits on top of the soil and it's going to water the plants a little bit. This and it's going to water the seeds a little bit. There you go. And seal it again. Before I continue planting this columbine, I want to show you the hookara that I'm going to be starting and the astilbe. So for the astilbe, I'm going to be starting the chinensis pumila. I don't know how to pronounce that. Here's a better view of it. And for the hookara, I'm going to be starting the Micrantha Palace Purple. There it is. Actually, for the Hookara, I'm going to try two varieties. So I'm going to do. Where's the green one? There we go. We're going to do this one also. And this is the Sangu. Sanguinea firefly. Sanguinea firefly? Is that how you pronounce it? I just wanted to show you what hookeras I'm going to be starting what and what I still be just in case if I don't have the time to finish this video again. So uh, let's go ahead and finish uh, these uh, containers and as I see some progression with them I'll update you on them.
So they're all done. And uh, I put them right here, uh, all together, clustered together. This way they can kind of keep each other warm. And I put snow in all of them. And uh, with the last three, I had to shove the snow inside the holes and my hands are freezing right now. They're warming up because the weather is kind of warm uh, right here. And uh, just to make sure that they get some sort of moisture. And this also, this snow will also help with the stratification. Uh, it will allow the seeds to kind of experience some cold temperatures while we have this uh, warm weather right now. And um, I ended up uh, having uh, two separate containers for each type of the hookah. I have two types, the Macrantha Palace Purple and the Sanguinea Firefly, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. But these are all beautiful, I can't wait to see them. Uh, start uh, sprouting and I can't wait to plant them in the garden I'm so excited about that and just for reference this is in front of the butterfly garden there's the butterfly garden right there and so the Sun sets on that side and it rises from this side over here so so they will get plenty of sunshine over here and uh, they should do well uh, one thing to note is that one of the years I did winter sowing, I put them in the vegetable garden and uh, that area gets super moist so a lot of the seeds rotted because of that because they were absorb absorbing all this moisture and uh, only a few of them uh, survived. So if you are uh, doing this and you live in a wet area, you want to make sure to put them in a uh, uh, in a semi dry location where they would receive a lot of sunlight and also receive rain and snow just to make sure that they would stay moist. And uh, if uh, you don't receive any moisture in your area, you want to make sure to keep it moist. Just make sure to water them with uh, kind of a mister or something like that to prevent uh, this, this, so that you don't dislodge any seeds and uh, to ensure that you will have a good germination rate. Uh, so uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to show you all uh, these seedlings once they germinate and um, once uh, we are ready to plant them outside and uh, I'll uh, take you along with me on whenever I'm going to plant them I'll show you where I'm, where I'm going to be planting them and uh, the, the garden is going to get more and more beautiful with every passing year it has already changed so much and uh, I can't wait for all the changes that are going to happen it's a beautiful journey and I hope you guys will come along with me on this journey uh, from taking our garden from drab to beautiful. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.